Hello, it's Joyful Hermit, and this is going to be a most interesting day. Um, today, this afternoon, I meet with my spiritual director, and a week ago today, our uh, acting bishop had encouraged me uh, to send in my rule of life, um, because he had found out that I had been a consecrated hermit for over 11 years in the diocese. And when I mentioned this to my spiritual director, who's been a bishop for over 37 years, he said, oh, he did. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, it's going to be interesting uh, whether or not my spiritual director wants me to uh, hand in my rule of life. Oops, wrong page. My rule of life and my vows and my motto and my everything is on this little paper. Um, and then also I have a notebook here, a printout of things I've written about the nine S's and about the, the perfect rule of life, which is the gospel rule. But um, I'm, I'm anticipating, sort of hoping that uh, we don't proceed with this. It seems a little, um, I don't know, not quite what his real presence wants for me. I, I, uh, I've been pondering this morning the, those who are quote unquote approved in the church. And uh, I think we have many, many examples of those who have been approved who uh, sadly then something happens and they are disapproved. So uh, it might be better to, for me to ponder Jesus Christ and he was not at all approved by the priests in the temple. Um, of his time, and uh, I guess his main approval was the cross. That He was certainly approved for that, wasn't he? He was sentenced to die by crucifixion, and that met with approval of the people and of those in charge, even of the priests, the high priests, and even his disciples ran in fear. Peter denied him. And so maybe that kind of approval is certainly well enough for the likes of me. However, whatever, if I'm to uh, hand in my vows and information, I can always decline the kind offer to be canonically approved, can't I? Um, anyway, I found this poem that I wrote a long time ago. Uh, it was back when I was friends with a, a Down syndrome man, actually a couple of them, but um, my son and I, my son was about 12 at the time, and my daughters were off to college, and we were going to pick up Wesley for Mass. And Wesley was very, very dear and sweet, and but always uh, surprising us. I had awakened that morning with these words <clears throat> coming to me, expect the unexpected. I had been given a little bit of a, of a scourging, I suppose, by the priest at that time in this parish I was in a small town. And he kept saying he wanted a sign, he wanted a sign. And, and at other times he would say, well, why don't these things happen to me? And, you know, well, I don't know. But... Um, so I, he said, pray for a sign for me. I guess regarding me, I don't know. So I prayed for a sign, did what I was told to do, but I was expounding to my son about how we just have to expect the unexpected in life, and we never know what we're going to find when we turn the corner. And we were driving along, and my poor son was having to listen to me get all excited about expecting the unexpected in life. And, and there we turned the corner, and there was Wesley standing, waiting for us to take him to Mass. It was, it was uh, March 18th, the day after St. Patrick's Day. Wesley is, was sort of a short munchkin type of a man with a big, big tummy. And he had this big green plastic bowler hat on with a big shamrock on it for St. Patrick's Day. And my son and I just both just said, yes, expect the unexpected, and Wesley provided it for us. Expect the unexpected, child. For pity's sake, 
Trust me, live each day in expectation of my sovereignty, for I'll forever surprise you and keep you on your toes. Expect the unexpected is my antidote to woes. When you come around the corner, you'll be surprised at what you'll meet. A Wesley in a bright green hat or my cross laid at your feet. And if you place your body down and climb upon my tree, I'll raise you up some day, dear girl, to have your fill of me. Until then, each moment wait with great expectancy. Take each hardship and each joy with equal clemency, and know for sure and in deep faith, I'll to my word be true, for what you've asked will indeed be granted. Oh yes, a sign, my love for you. And indeed, Jesus gives us his signs to us, not necessarily for others and sometimes in very subtle and hidden ways what has sort of been running also through my mind is the um, surprise I suppose when a longtime confessor of mine one day said well you're an individual it was just that, I guess, it was seemed humorous that he had suddenly come upon that reality. And we are all individuals. We, and, and especially, I would have to say, hermits. And that's why this uh, evolving of canonical status and all the rules and the precedence that's being set is um, becoming more and more sort of humorous to me because... Hermits all through history have rather been very uncommon people. Uh, individuals, unique, uh, the hermit paths are many and varied. The goal is all the same. Lay ourselves down upon whatever cross his real presence gives to us. Expect the unexpected. And learn love. And learn to rejoice in love. Even the the moniker Joyful Hermit, which his real presence is so pleased with that I've come to this one, um, is not your typical. I mean, most people think of a hermit. In fact, I, I found another hermit online, a canonical hermit last night, and she has sort of the stereotypical visage and style that I guess I used to think of. Um, very pale sort of homely um, and wrote about how she had always been withdrawn and introverted and liked to be off by herself to sort of an extreme she liked that and now I guess she she speaks to her parents once a week on the phone all her other family family members once a year but she works and and uh, has workshops and I'm not even sure what her rule of life is, but she took the canonical vows with her bishop, and it was in another country, so the whole setup was uh, far more relaxed than here, but comprised the, the essential elements. And I shouldn't say more relaxed than here. Here it depends on diocese by diocese. In fact, the United States bishops have asked that there be a crucifix in the churches and I visited a diocese where there wasn't so much as even a crucifix on the processional cross in their cathedral and so you know I guess it's the old adage rules are made to be broken and I have seen the reality within the church of many rules being broken and that creates a diversity and also the most difficult task of creating yet more rules and more laws and then trying to keep up with correcting the, the errors and pretty soon I guess we're not writing poetry anymore 
and we're not examining our souls or considering how the birds dress each day. So anyway, maybe I'll let you know what happens after this afternoon. Um, it's bound to be eventful. Everything in life is eventful. Every moment that unfolds. Please remember that. Even if you are a prisoner within a prison in our, in our criminal justice system, you never know what's just around the corner. And expect the unexpected in joy and love and acceptance. God bless his real presence in you. And may you have an unexpectedly amazing day in Lent today.